with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. By Sirius Satellite Radio. By the University of Michigan Alumni Association, uniting the leaders in best, www.umalumni.com. By State Farm, providing insurance and financial services. By AT&T, for a behind-the-scenes look at sports, visit attblueroom.com slash sports. And by Powered by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. It's all I say to you is congratulations on a great win. This is a great oh, yeah. Michigan team win. I'm a Michigan replay ex exclusive in the locker room after a victory over Illinois in a gutty, Tough, hard-nosed win on the road. Lloyd, you had to be proud of that team out there. Well, I wasn't. And, Jim, uh, you said it after the game. It was a resilient group, and it was a special win because uh, there was a lot of things that went on in the course of that game, and we uh, kept battling, kept finding uh, a way to stay in the game. It seemed like through the first quarter, it was we were saying, what next? Because Mike Hart doesn't start. Chad Henney has to go out for a little bit. Uh, Carlos Brown, the backup running back, has an ankle problem. It was like one of those things of what's going to happen next, and yet through that all, they fought and they got the victory. Well, and especially when you consider the way the game started. I mean, we win the toss and defer, kick off, and it went back so fast. <laughs> made your heart swim. Well, here's how it started off, and I'm sure you were standing there going, Wait a minute, this wasn't the way it's supposed to go. Well, you know, uh, I, I give Illinois credit. They uh, set up a new return there, blocked it differently, and hit a crease. And here on second down, uh, play action pass, Donovan gets caught watching the ball, and uh, they're ahead 7 to nothing. Less than a minute gone, and you're down 7 zip. That's exactly what you don't want to do on the road. All right, well, here you go, your first possession. You get out of trouble here on this third down completion, but then on the next play, you throw a pick. Well, we had bad field position because uh, on the kickoff, we didn't, we didn't get it out very far, and uh, throwing deep in our own territory, uh, Illinois comes up with a play, and then Chris Graham makes a great play here off the back side of the protection, gets a sack, and takes them out of great field position. And, and that was a huge defensive stand. Now yeah. you're in the game, Ryan Mallett in for Henny. Well, Carson Butler uh, caught some balls, and, and this has been a very good play. It's, it's one of the ways we try to slow down the pursuit of, the, of uh, the, uh, the defense against our running game. Here, Carlos Brown runs off left tackle, and uh, Carlos had quite a day. Here's the field goal, and you didn't even know this happened, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Uh, what a remarkable kick, and, and even the, the effort that Zoltan Mesko made to get the ball down after uh, mishandling it uh, turned into a great play. 7-3 to three game at that point, and then Illinois comes back in the second quarter, puts together maybe their best sustained drive of the day. Well, we did a good job of getting some people to the ball. But Juice Williams, uh, his biggest run of the day, kept the ball. Uh, and it wasn't that we didn't uh, play it well. He made a great cut inside. Here, Mendenhall, we he's missed a, some tackles, but this guy. He's made nifty, it. isn't he? Yes, he did. That was a great run for uh, 10 or 12 yards. Then they get the touchdown from Dufresne as they go wide on you and take a 14 to 3 lead. Well, uh, that was not a good omen. 90 <laughs> yards. A long drive. Uh, they hit some passes, and uh, we're really uh, not we're, we're not in sync here. But then you come back, Chad Henney, back in the ball game. Boy, did he deliver! Well, he delivered in so many ways. But they're a big play when we needed it. Down 14 to three, a great throw and catch, uh, great protection. Arrington continued uh, uh, his uh, wonderful season. Here, Chad comes back and finds Mario. For a big first down. And then off play action. Well, I thought it was a great call here. And, and Mario made a great uh, effort to get the ball into the end zone. And uh, uh, we're back in the game. At that point, it's 14 to 10. Then the defense really stood up. Look at this. Short yardage. 
and you stop the quarterback on the same run that he broke early. It's the same uh, type play, uh, Jim, and we we really, uh, uh, really for the rest of the day did a good job with that play. And then uh, Illinois makes uh, a big mistake. One of the bigger plays of the game. Yes, it was because it kept our drive alive. Uh, they're going to have good field position. They left the kicker, and here uh, a great throw. Uh, and, and Mario uh, ran a good route. We had good protection. And, and this is good field yeah, position. Right here. before the half, you get a great draw play here with Brandon Miner running. And inside two minutes, you go no huddle. And I thought this was one of the key drives of the game. Well, I think it was too. And uh, uh, Brandon Miner gave us some very, very good uh, plays today. Some of them without the ball. Here is just a sensational throw under pressure. And, Carson Butler is covered well and still makes a catch to keep the drive alive. We talk about sensation. How about that one? Unbelievable. Great catch. And, uh, of course, the, they ruled this, this ball uh, was caught out of bounds. And, uh, fortunately, uh, replay the last time we had controversy down there, we didn't have replay. <laughs> Thank goodness we had it today. Yeah, because at halftime, you go off with a 17-14 lead. And i got to tell you, Coach, you know, that was one of those things where you look at the game and you look at all the things that had happened through that first half and you go, Michigan's got a three-point lead. What's going on? Well, uh, being down 14-3, to three, the crowd was really in the game, Jim. The, the win uh, in the second quarter, we were into the win scoring two touchdowns. So uh, we felt very good about that because that win was really a, a factor. And in the second half, Michigan gets the victory. We'll be back to take a look at those highlights. But first, we hear from Jamar Adams. Talks about how Michigan handled that spread option. We worked hard and practiced on it, and um, you know, guys, and we had some struggles here and there, but guys just did a great job of fitting you know what I'm saying, the option the way we we're supposed to fit it, and we just did a great job out there today. The locker room. They had an awesome defensive line, linebackers. It was all good, all good. But um, our O-line, we got a dominant O-line. I love those guys, and those guys did great tonight. And they made holes, and uh, like I said, we hit the holes. Carlos Brown did a great job filling in. Wolverines had a 17-14 lead at half. You go to the second half, and this game actually went down to the fourth quarter. Just something you knew was going to happen, right? Well, it was certainly, uh, uh, after the way the game started, we were hoping <laughs> to get down to the fourth quarter. The big key there is in the third quarter, Illinois took the wind which gave you the win in the fourth quarter, and that became a big, important uh, decision. Well, it really did. Uh, in the third quarter, we put together, here's a very good drive that was kept alive, uh, third down. Ryan catches him in man coverage and scrambles for a big first down. Yeah, yeah, now it had to there. start the second half. Then, the big mistake again, the quarterback center exchange. Well, yeah, that's something that uh, we still continue to struggle with at times. And, uh, that that really hurt us because we were we were uh, knocking on the door there, and here this McGee he ran around this end so fast. I mean this guy can run. He was in there for uh, Juice Williams and quarterback. We finally got him corralled after a 16-yard run. Really an amazing game. Four quarterbacks in this ball game. And here's Mendenhall again as they start to put a, a real good drive together. But on a third and four, the defense again comes up big here. Well, Jim, they kept the ball. They gave the ball to Menden Hall there, and uh, there's no question that was one of the bigger stops of the game. It forces them to go for a field goal, and they're good from 38, which ties the score at 14. Then you get the ball back and put a, a good drive together here. It looks like you're going to take the lead back. Carlos Brown starts it out with a big run. Well, uh, we... Uh, have some uh, problems there getting the snap and getting the handoff. And Carlos, he kind of uh, bails you yes, out. Yes, he did. He broke a big, uh, big run there off uh, the right side of our line. Uh, but here again, uh, Ryan makes a mistake, throws into coverage, and we give up a sure three points there, at least uh, an ability to attempt uh, three. And uh, Illinois has got some life. Yeah, there's a great tackle right there because you're in a goal line out in the field in a short yardage, and if he gets the, past that one, he may go the distance. But there's no question here with the option, a big hit by Obi Aze. And uh, yeah, this guy is uh, our defense. 
really stiffen in the second half. Well, and that was a huge play because third and four gets you the ball back. And then Illinois starts to self-destruct. This is a third down play where you don't make the first down, and this face mask gets you 15 more yards. No question, Jim. That was one another one of the real big plays in the game because uh, the, we're going to have to punt the ball in there. And here's another one and a mistake by Illinois. Well, it really is 30 yards of penalties on this drive. And, uh, you know, that's uh, part of the game. And certainly uh, uh, it hurts your team. Even though you don't get a score out of this, it puts you in great field position. Then Zoltan Mesko hits a great punt. It is. That's a, a perfect description. It was a great punt. You can't imagine watching on TV how high that ball was. And out. with the wind, he had to just pooch it, and he got it inside the 10. You get the recovery on the muff, and then you go to your bag of tricks. Well, uh, here, uh, when these plays uh, work, they're beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> we don't Did you draw that one up? No, that was uh, <laughs> Mike DeBoer and Eric Campbell and Andy Moeller and Fred Jackson and, all, and Mike, all of them. But uh, it was a great play, well executed. Did I should have mentioned uh, Sean Griffin uh, made the big recovery there, uh, covering that punt. Then you have a 24-17 lead. You get the ball back, and this was a huge kick from 39. Gives you a 10-point lead at 27-17 with just about three and a half left to play. Uh, and really, you put Illinois in a real bind. Well, Casey uh, Lapano certainly uh, had another great day. And here, uh, the last, uh, run, the, the last uh, uh, chance they have, uh, Donovan Warren comes up with a great interception. 27-17 the final. And one of the things you said after the game, one of the courageous, more courageous performances you've ever seen by Chad Henning. Well, Jim, uh, I, you know, at, at one point there, I didn't think he would return at all. Well, one time he tried, and you told him, <laughs> no, go back, you can't play. Well, you know, I, I, he, he wanted to play, and uh, but to be able to come back in after taking uh, the hit he did on the sack early in the game, uh, I think every guy in our and our program has always had great respect for him, but certainly the toughness that he showed in this game, uh, none of us will ever forget. Is satisfying a win as you've had in a while? Well, I, yeah, I think it is. I mean, when you take into consideration Mike Hart uh, could not uh, come back, and, um, you know, the just uh, then, then Chad goes out. I mean, to be able to continue to fight against a good football team on the road when you're down 14 to three, to come back and win and, and play as well as we did in the second half, uh, yeah, that's rewarding. You bet it is, and it was. When we come back, we'll catch up with Tom Terrific. But first we hear from that man, Chad Henney. The key against Illinois was the running game. We started to be able to run the ball. I mean, Carlos and uh, Brandon Miner stepped up today and got some good runs in there. And then uh, we attacked them with the pass game like we did all game and uh, completed some big third downs. Now, the Pontiac performance play of the game. It's an end around with Arrington. Arrington's going to throw back in the end zone. He's got Manny Ham for a touchdown, Michigan. How do you like that? The Wolverines take the lead on a bit of trickery and end around with Adrian Arrington carrying the ball, and then he throws it to Manningham. Tom Brady may be the most celebrated Wolverine graduate playing in the NFL these days. Three Super Bowl rings and two Super Bowl MVPs sure help in that regard. You may think all that fame and fortune may have changed him, but you'd be wrong. Tom Brady is the same solid young man that arrived at Michigan from California in the mid-90s. And even after all his incredible success, he hasn't forgotten his days in Ann Arbor. This is where I learned to play. This is, this is where it all started. We always uh, used to joke around, you got to be a State Street quarterback before you, know, you become anything else. And that man got to put the work in at the practice field to, to ultimately kind of achieve your goals. And it was, it was a battle here. I mean, we fought. We had so many great players over the years, and it was constant competition. And that's what I wanted out of college, and that's why I chose Michigan. And if you don't want that, you don't come to a place like Michigan. Brady rolling right, firing a pass up by Thompson at the 10 to 5. Touchdown, Michigan. Woo! Sean Thompson on the first play of overtime. Brady tying another Michigan bowl record. 
with his fourth TD pass of the game. Got to win the Orange Bowl and win the Citrus Bowl and win the Rose Bowl, and um, it all paid off. It's just a wonderful place. Tom was back in Ann Arbor this summer for the 1997 team's national champion reunion. The event helped raise money for Mott Children's Hospital, and it allowed Tom Terrific to reflect on the lessons he learned as a Wolverine that he still carries with him today. The one thing that Coach Carr always assured us was that there was nothing that was given to anybody. Whatever you, whatever you achieved here, you had to earn, and that's why we were successful as a team. There was no positions that was given. There was no incumbents. There was nothing like that. So, you know, part of learning to compete is to compete every day in practice. And, you know, I, I think that was a wonderful lesson to learn when I went on and played. I mean, I still compete for my job every day. I don't think that it's mine. No, I, if I'm the best player on the team and I give our chance the best, uh, our team the best chance to win, then, hey, I'll play. But if I'm not, then, you know, somebody else has to step in. You know, going to Michigan, there's no other place I could ever see myself going. I'm so proud of this school. I'm so proud of what we, what we represent. I'm so proud of the relationships that I have with my friends that I still keep in touch to this day. And it's a wonderful feeling coming back here. He's quite a story, and I'm told that Tom Brady watches Michigan Replay on satellite. <laughs> well, uh, you would think Tom would have more to do with you that. You would, wouldn't, wouldn't you? you? <coughs> but the, the thing is great is I was reading the Sports Illustrated article, and it goes to what he said in the piece. Dante Stallworth said after their Dallas game, Brady prepares like he hadn't made the team yet, and here he is, a Hall of Famer. Well, you know, of all the, the – there's so many incredible qualities that Tom possesses, and Humility, you know, the idea that uh, you, you can always get better, and I think that's uh, really been part of his secret as well as, you know, blessed with a lot of ability and a great uh, intelligence and all those things. But uh, that's, uh, you know, he, he's a special guy. He is indeed. We'll be back, and we'll take a look at the Battle for the Brown Jug. That's coming up. But first we hear from Adrian Arrington, who says, you got to still play him one at a time. You can't let up. You know, every game, like I said, is for the for the championship ring. Plus, Minnesota, you know, I'm sure they want that jug, you know, and we're gonna try to we're gonna try to keep it here. Hide the locker room. They're a Big Ten game. It's a, it's it's a game for the championship, and that's what we're looking at it as. And uh, I get excited for every game, and I know our defense is sure enough that uh, we won't have a letdown like that. So we'll get ready to go. Well, after a tough victory at Illinois, the Wolverines return home next week to play one of Lloyd Carr's favorite opponents because the trophy is the Little Brown Jug. You really like that traditional Brown Jug game, don't you? Well, you know, we don't have that many trophies. We got the Paul Bunyan Trophy with Michigan State, but uh, the Little Brown Jug, you know, Jim, Jim 1903, I mean... We're talking know, Yost here. Yeah, we're talking about the beginning of Michigan football and uh, the tradition that down through the years and so many great games and a lot of great players and great uh, memories. Uh, Tim Brewster is the new head coach at Minnesota, the Golden Gophers, and he's got quarterback Allen Weber. Offensively, you say this is a team that will scare you. They'll score some points. <coughs> There's no question. They have a scheme. They know how to move the football. And Amir Penix, uh, their scoring is... is uh, really been an outstanding back there. It hurt us uh, two years ago up there. And Ernie Wheelwright, Jim, this guy wears number one. Big, uh, tall, lanky guy can now jump you. Uh, very tough in one-on-one coverage. Uh, and Eric Decker, who uh, had a great year a year ago. Those two guys. But And Wheelwright seems like he's been around for 10 years. <laughs> Defensively, Willie Van de Steeg is there best defensive lineman, and Dominic Don Barber is their strong safety, and he, he will come up and he'll support the run. They have struggled a bit defensively this season, uh, but again, we've learned, if we've learned anything this year, is you can't take anybody lightly, and that goes through the entire college football world. Well, I can remember hearing uh, Coach Brewster talk at the Big Ten, uh, uh, the kickoff luncheon and, and uh, the press conference, and he talked about uh, how the Little Brown Jug was going to be uh, something that they really focused on that was really, you know, one of the measuring sticks for their program. So 
uh, we understand they're coming in to try to get take the jug out of here, and, and we've got to do our best to keep it. And one of the things you have to do is field a healthy team. You, well, you're gonna, you got a mash unit going on, and uh, this week's going to tell a lot. Chad Henney, Michael Hart, uh, some of the other guys. Well, there's no question, Jim, that uh, we're a, you know, we are a banged-up football team. Hopefully we can get some guys back. Uh, but when you look at it, you know, it's one of those things. You look at the 12-game schedule, no bye week. Uh, it's not fair, and it's something that uh, we need to get addressed. But in the meantime, we got to get ready to play uh, because the schedule is what it is. And uh, we've made some strides. We're, we're improving. But uh, we do need to get healthy. All right. Hopefully they'll get healthy next week as the battle for the Brown Jug year 2007 gets underway. Don't uh, miss a bit of it right here, same time, same place, when we replay it all on Michigan Replay.